So in this video, we're going to do two things. I'm going to very quickly go over the answers to the worksheet from last week. And then we're going to look at the reactions of metals with cold water. And they will be, again, same as last day, there'll be a video just demonstrating some of the reactions. And I'll want you to take the observations and get some ideas behind it. So first of all, the worksheet from last week, a reactivity series is a list of elements with the most reactive at the top, least reactive at the bottom. And I saw quite a few of you had those. We had talked over about the idea of metals reacting with oxygen and they give the oxides. So sodium plus oxygen, sodium oxide, magnesium plus oxygen, magnesium oxide. Those are the ones that were very, very violent, high up reactivity series. The ones where we need to powder the metal, iron. So iron reacted with oxygen gave us iron oxide. And then the metals low down that only just about glow copper. Well, it has to again react with oxygen to give us copper oxide. What we showed in the video last day were competition reactions and you remember what a competition reaction is where a more reactive metal takes from a metal below it in the reactivity series. We had four competition reactions so the zinc and copper oxide was the one again you did in the in the lab and we remind you of that that's where the mixture flares up. The zinc steals away the oxygen becomes zinc oxide and the observation for it to remember is a yellow solid that cools down to white so zinc oxide's white but when it's hot it's yellow. And then because copper was the other product, there's a brown solid, you get little specks of brown solid. The magnesium, because it's so much more reactive than the copper, it's a very violent reaction here. And the magnesium basically and copper oxide give us an explosive mixture. So in the lab, I got you to stand well, well back. Uh, in the video you saw, it put into the fume cupboard and again, you got that explosion. And then because magnesium is reacting a brilliant or bright white light. Copper oxide and carbon, that was the one again they demonstrated last week with the bottle top and the mixture. And when you heat that, the mixture glows. We also tested for carbon dioxide in the lab, but uh, they didn't show that in the video. And then what proved that the carbon had stolen away from the copper uh, was that you got tiny black specks of the metal copper left behind. So copper oxide and carbon give us carbon dioxide and then copper left behind. And then the final one, which was the one where he had the big box filled with carbon dioxide, he put a roll of magnesium in and there was a bit of a crackling and then there was a white solid, remember lots and lots of white, brilliant white light, you could have recorded that as well. And then at the end of it, when he lifted it out, there was a black solid left behind and that again, that is the magnesium. Stealing away from the carbon, giving us magnesium oxide, that's all the white stuff. And then the black stuff is carbon. Then the word equations, the first one was zinc and copper oxide. Well, the zinc stealing away the oxygen, that gives us zinc oxide plus copper. The magnesium, even though it was a violent reaction, again, it was the magnesium stealing away the oxygen, giving us magnesium oxide plus copper. The carbon, it stole away and gives us carbon oxide, which we normally call carbon dioxide and copper. And magnesium, it stole away from and I think there was a typo in your uh, worksheet that should have been carbon dioxide and that gives us magnesium oxide plus carbon. The last bit of the video, I showed you a use for this because sometimes we do lots of chemistry and it doesn't appear to have any uses. And this one is very useful in welding railway tracks and aluminium and iron oxide. The aluminium steals away the oxygen, turns into aluminium oxide and then that leaves iron. And you remember you saw in the video, the iron runs out, it's molten and runs out. So what it's used for is it's used to weld railway tracks together. They drip it in between two bits of railway track and then that joins the railway track together. And that's the use of that mixture. Now, just before we do the reactions with metals and cold water, just a little concept that we've got in chemistry. And this is two new words that will hopefully uh, mean a bit to you whenever we go through them but we use them quite a bit particularly right up to a level chemistry and it's a quite important concept that comes in as we go through and it's a concept called oxidation and reduction now what do they mean well look at the box that we have at the top here and it's the top of your worksheet adding on of oxygen is sometimes called oxidation so if things add on oxygen we say that they have been oxidized that process is called oxidation and it literally means something has got oxygen added on so if something becomes something oxide magnesium reaction becomes magnesium oxide it has been oxidized carbon adds on oxygen becomes carbon dioxide it has been oxidized so oxidation is the addition of oxygen the opposite substance 
process that is if a substance has oxygen taken away from it, the removal of oxygen, then that is called reduction. It's got it taken away. So it's got lighter, which is where they really discovered that initially. So it's called reduction. So removal of oxygen is reduction. Now, we're going to give you a couple of examples to do. The top one I'll have worked through on this video, and you can fill it in your worksheet. And then the three underneath it, you can follow the same pattern through. So look at this first one. Copper oxide plus zinc, given as zinc oxide plus copper. Now, if you look at it, on the left-hand side we had zinc. On the right-hand side is zinc oxide. So the zinc has added on oxygen. So underneath it, when it says the substance oxidized, well, what on the left-hand side has turned into something that's got oxygen on the right-hand side? Zinc. So the substance oxidized is zinc. What has been reduced? Now, the reduced substance always has to have oxygen in, the in it in the first place. So we always have an oxide being reduced. So if you look at it here, what has got the oxide in it is the copper oxide. So that whole thing is then reduced to copper. So copper oxide gets is oxygen taken away and turned into copper. So what's been reduced is the copper oxide. So zinc added on oxygen, it has been oxidized. Copper oxide lost oxygen, it has been reduced. Now, what I want you to do is to try the same with those three. So look carefully, see how the pattern ties in with it, and then try those on the worksheet. If you want, you can pause the video and do that. If you prefer, watch the whole video and then I do it afterwards. Okay, so what we're going to look at on the video is I'm going to show you the reactions of several metals with cold water. I've videoed these in our lab and you'll see that the metals are being dropped into cold water. And what I want you to do on the worksheet is just write down a few observations. What do you see happening? Now, again, I'll talk through it as we go through the video. So either you can watch it, listen to what we're saying, pick up what the observations are and then pause it and write them in. Or you can watch them all and then try and remember and put the observations in at the end. So when these react with cold water, what they're doing is they're reacting with an oxide. Now, all of you hopefully remember from last year that water has got the formula H2O. And that means that it's really hydrogen joined to oxygen together. So another way of talking about water is to call it hydrogen oxide. So if a metal reacts with hydrogen oxide, then it must be stealing oxygen away from the hydrogen. So any metal that reacts with water is above hydrogen on the reactivity series. So the metal is reacting with hydrogen oxide, water, which is hydrogen oxide, and is becoming the metal oxide plus hydrogen. And that's what shows the reactivity of metals compared to hydrogen. Now, in the video, watch and see which metals react and see which metals don't. There are some metals that don't react with water. And if they don't react with water, that means hydrogen's more reactive and the metal can't steal away from the hydrogen. So this first one is sodium. Now, sodium, as you can see, we have to store in the lab in a bottle. And if you look in the bottle, you remember there is oil and that oil stops oxygen from reacting with it as a stored. Now, when we first cut the sodium, as you can see, it's a shiny solid, so there's the, it's a metal that proves it's metal. So here's a tiny piece of sodium, we're taking the oil off, and then watch and see does it react with the water. So if I'm quiet, you can probably just about hear the hissing. And that's a sign, yes, it's reacting, and that's actually hydrogen gas being given off. And you can see it zipping over the surface it's turned into a little ball. It's such a hot reaction. It's turned into a ball. And that's a sign of a reacting. So it floats. It gets smaller, disappears, and reacts. This is potassium. Again, a soft metal. Now, again, you can see the little shininess of the potassium. That proves it's a metal. Again, we're going to take a small piece. And that fizzling is the paper towel taking the oil off the potassium and watch this time. And you see a much faster reaction this time. So I've just paused it so it can go for a couple of things here. So in both cases, you can see we've used a little tiny bit of the metal. We're actually, I'm being very, very cautious 
with it. They're so reactive that they react straight away. They float on top of the water. They both react. You can see the potassium probably reacted quicker. And in fact, the flare that you saw from the potassium is the hydrogen burning. So both of those metals react quite vigorously with water. Now, the next one is some calcium. And with calcium, we can use a slightly bigger piece. So you'll see there the piece of calcium a bit bigger than the others. And watch what happens here. So this time it sinks. It's maybe not just as obvious, but if you look at the front there, you can just about see it's at the bottom of the water this time. You can see it fizzing away. So there's more hydrogen being given off. So that's calcium plus water given us calcium oxide plus hydrogen. Or calcium plus hydrogen oxide given us calcium oxide plus hydrogen. And there's a sign of it being very, very reactive. So calcium does react quite vigorously with water. Here's a little strip of magnesium. And let's drop it into the water. Now think of what you saw with the others. And you can see it's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? There's not very much there. I've homed in it and you can just about see on the surface one or two little bubbles, but practically nothing. And here's copper. And if we put it in, absolutely nothing. Copper has no reaction with water at all. So the magnesium reacted very, very slightly. We've got some slight bubbling, but the copper had nothing at all. It just sinks to the bottom and no reaction. Now, when we think of reaction with cold water, let's call water hydrogen oxide. So what I would like you to do to finish off your worksheet is fill in your observations for sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and copper. If necessary, rewind the video and go through it again. And then think about this. The questions are, which metals reacted with the water, hydrogen oxide or water? So you should be able to list off, give you a clue there's four of them. And then what did I tell you that tells you about the reaction compared to hydrogen? Which was the metal that didn't react with hydrogen oxide? And then again, what did I tell you about its reactivity compared to hydrogen? And then have we think about the last one. If you're making something to use as a water container, which of those metals that we showed you would be the most suitable and why? Hopefully a fairly obvious one. And if you look around your home, you've got a big clue to that as well. Okay. And if you take a picture of your work and then upload it, and then we'll be in touch over the next week or so. Okay.